Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to talk to you guys about a piece of legislation that passed in the United States. It is pertinent to the fitness industry, the supplement industry, all of that, so let's break it down a little bit. Now, I want to talk about the, the pros and the cons, why I'm actually okay with this piece of legislation, but I do want to talk about the, the hypocrisy and the potential negatives of it. Now, this piece of legislation was passed by the Senate in the U.S., and it is now banning and making illegal designer steroids and designer pro-hormones in the supplement industry across the board in the United States. Now, I appreciate the hypocrisy of that, of a bunch of out-of-shape, fat old men writing laws on what fitness enthusiasts can or can't put into their own bodies when they have a fast food restaurant at the corner of every city block in the entire country. Believe me, the irony and the hypocrisy of that is not lost upon me. But that is a separate issue. Let's deal with the issue at hand. As I've gotten older and I've observed the fitness world, the training world, the drug world, the iron game over the years, I have become increasingly pro-prescription, pro-people doing these things through a medical doctor using exclusively pharmaceutical grade products and particularly doing so through the care of a physician to where they can monitor their blood work, other things. I think that really is the way forward with this. And we do have a lot of corruption within the supplement industry. Now, I am very pro-business. I'm not even against a supplement industry existing as long as it can exist and provide a product ethically. I don't have a problem with people becoming rich while doing good business, while doing fair business. I don't have a problem with people becoming rich through free trade. I have a problem with bad ethics. The supplement industry, by and large, has a history of bad ethics, and we do need to get that reeled in a little bit. They need to be providing quality products to the consumers. There needs to be better checks and balances there. And stuff like anabolic steroids really fall into the area of pharmaceuticals, and a lot of the products that they push out in the supplement industry are really pharmaceutical products. They shouldn't be unregulated supplements for the most part unless we want to say that all pharmaceuticals are unregulated. Now, if we as a society go that route, that's okay, then unregulate this stuff. But if we're going to regulate pharmaceutical substances, regulate drugs, then anything that they're pushing out that really is a drug, it needs to fall back under that category. The supplement companies aren't the ones who need to be pushing it out. It needs to be pharmaceutical companies, it needs to be doctors involved, purely for the, the safety of the patient. And again, I'm aware that that may sound hypocritical when we have aisles and aisles of soda and junk food and a fast food restaurant on every corner where we have an obesity epidemic but again that's a separate political topic that needs to be addressed in its own right and it should be addressed but the thing that you get into is that all of these designer steroids that they're cranking out they're not cranking out the best products they can crank out they're cranking out the products that they can find legal loopholes to crank out that aren't even necessarily that safe most of these designer steroids that are being cranked out are highly liver toxic most Prescription, particularly injectable prescription, anabolics and testosterone exhibit very low or zero toxicity. And they're not choosing to put those out. They're choosing to put out what they have legal loopholes that allow them to put out. And so these compounds slip through the cracks. They therefore crank out really powerful pharmaceutical grade products that exhibit a high toxicity, largely because of their oral nature that allows you to take them orally and for them to bypass the liver and to get into your bloodstream and repeatedly bypass the liver and stay in the bloodstream. Whereas you don't deal with that same issue with, say, testosterone or nandrolone to coenate and other things that your doctor might prescribe in a depot. So it is a safety issue there. And again, these things are being touted as safe and they're not necessarily safe and they're definitely not safe for teenagers to be taking. So yeah, there does need to be some restrictions in place, but what I would like to see more of in the future and what we are seeing, if we want to have a business endeavor where businesses, someone is making a profit and providing these things to the public, I would much rather see this done through longevity clinics, through medical doctors, through prescription so that we can regulate the quality of the product. You know that people are getting what they're paying for. They're getting a high grade product that meets pharmaceutical standards as these are pharmaceutical compounds. These things are not something to play around with so that they are less demonized. If it's done more and more openly through, through clinics under doctors where people get blood work, I think that's the way that you remove the demonization of these things and the stigma and it is easy. You can do that right now easily in the U.S., believe it or not. You can do it that way. It's just it's a bit more expensive, and a lot of people choose not to go that route due to cost. But then when you take the alternative, like we have in the U.K. right now, to where this stuff has been completely decriminalized, it's only illegal to distribute, you have tons of underground labs that have sprung up. They produce low-quality products with high contaminants, high 
amounts of bacteria that aren't sterile enough, that aren't dosed correctly, frequently underdose the wrong substance in there. And this is very, very common. And I say this because I personally am friends with a couple of owners of these underground labs here in the United Kingdom. I won't give away their identity. They're not, no, these are not trained chemists. And yet they're mass producing products that people are injecting into their body. That's your other alternative. That's what happens when <laughs> You have that situation versus at least if people are going to go do this stuff through medical doctors they know what they're getting they have doctors who are concerned with their health can recommend the, the safest products if they want to go this route they can monitor their blood work they can make sure that people are being more responsible with it and i think that's really the key to this if you want further decriminalization remove the demonization we need people who are being responsible with these things not a bunch of teenagers acting recklessly and just putting whatever into their body without knowing necessarily what it is without knowing the side effects without medical supervision that's why you see it's so easy to demonize it now we need to go the other direction and i fully support the idea of this being done as a legal business with medical doctors and pharmaceutical companies involved with, with oversight i think that's the way forward with it if we want to make a business out of anabolics not underground labs and not supplement companies for sure so I don't necessarily have a problem with this bill as long as we see the overall step going in the other direction with the longevity clinics and the, the medical doctor involvement. All right, guys, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. Oh, Mount Bicepius.